In this there video, I'm going to try to make a rocket engine from batteries or thermite or both. Depends how this goes. Uh, when I did the thermite video several months ago, this did dawn on me. And then a couple of people mentioned it in the comments even. So here it goes. When I was doing those videos and working on the thermites, I noticed that the pure manganese dioxide and aluminum mix was extremely fast. While the battery, standard batteries, that is the older ones, which is manganese dioxide plus carbon, burned with some force. So... The combination of something fast and something that had some force, both of them had manganese dioxide in it, gave me this idea. A little history here because we are going to be using those standard batteries. The D cells were actually the first ones made, which I'll also be using. They were introduced in 1898 by the National Carbon Company. And in there is the anode, which is zinc, it's the casing. The cathode is the manganese dioxide and carbon. And the electrode was ammonium chloride. And interestingly, as I mentioned, this is still being used today, 126 years later. So to make a rocket engine, I'm going to have to mix the very fast manganese dioxide with that which had some force, with, which had the carbon in it. And it's going to have to be the right ratio of the battery manganese dioxide, the pure manganese dioxide, which, by the way, is in the plus four configuration. That's the manganese uh, atom right here and aluminum powder, even if this is at all possible. And I don't know if it is. Some of the issues I'm thinking I might have is it is thermite, so the high temperatures, maybe they'll burn through the nozzle. So making a nozzle, is that even possible to uh, do? And what's the best way to light it? And also, will the engine casing survive? So obviously this is going to burn in the thousands of degrees. If it's a rocket engine, all this has to hold up in order for it to work. Uh, we'll see. The materials we need, I've mostly talked about battery, manganese dioxide with the carbon, pure manganese dioxide, aluminum powder, some PVC tubing, and I am going to start with the epoxy kitty litter mix that I use for uh, the nozzles. Um, I'm not sure what else to start with right now, so that's what I'm going to use. The reaction here is three manganese dioxides plus four aluminums plus the carbon, and some heat will give us three manganese plus two aluminum oxides plus the carbon dioxide. Now this is the exhaust. Most rocket engines don't work on the fire coming out the back. It's the exhaust, the gases. So you can see this is actually the smallest component of all of these right here. So we'll have to see what happens, uh, but hopefully that's enough carbon dioxide to get this thing off the ground. In the methods, I this is definitely trial and error. I'm gonna start with manganese dioxide plus carbon from a battery, six grams, manganese dioxide pure, six grams. So I'm just gonna mix equal amounts of each of these and aluminum five grams and that's kind of a guesstimate and I'll be using simple tubes and I want to just show you this really quick here they're just these cardboard uh, tubes so I'll cut them up and pack them but I'm not gonna make rocket engines I'm just gonna pack them and light them and see what starts to work the best when I do get to making a rocket engine uh, this is kind of a cutaway view here so the epoxy and kitty litter nozzle will be right here the mix will be a packed powder mix so I'm not gonna wet this at all I'm just gonna put the powder of these three in here pack it down good put on an end cap that will harden to keep it in there and of course we have a PVC casing all the way around. And finally, uh, I'll be drilling a hole all the way down the center. And the reason for this is that homemade rocket engines often clog easily. So if you start burning from just here, the material gets in the way and starts to clog. If you have this here, this can burn up the center and then outwards, and it just alleviates a lot of the clogging problems. And the nozzle I'm gonna start with, which is what I've used for almost all my rocket engines, is 964 of an inch. So that's the drill bit I'll be using. We'll see if that works or not. Obviously, I have some confidence that this is going to work. I would not be doing it. Um, I just think it's going to take a little time to figure this out, but hopefully we can make these uh, rocket engines from batteries and thermite. So I have here an older, super heavy-duty battery, and these are known as zinc carbon batteries. Uh, the casing is like a zinc can, and there's a carbon rod that goes through the middle that attaches to the top here, which is the uh, positive electrode, the negatives down here, etc. But typically, these are uh, put together pretty simple, and you can take them apart. And we need our battery manganese dioxide to calm down the pure manganese dioxide in trying to make these rocket engines. So you've probably seen this before, but in case you haven't, I am going to take this apart and show that to you. All right, I hope you caught all that. So here is our wet manganese dioxide. It's soaked in the electrolyte, which is usually ammonium chloride, um, and it needs to dry out really well. So that's got to be done. I'm going to do that to these other two right here. Just to show you, this is a zinc can. It is pure zinc, definitely worth saving. And here are the carbon rods that come out of the middle of them, which work really well as electrodes for some experiments, particularly alkaline ones. It's all dried nicely, and I'll be putting it in that bottle right there.
This is my very first test of trying to make a rocket engine out of manganese dioxide and aluminum. There's a total of 17 grams there and I did uh, 12 of the grams were manganese dioxide uh, evenly mixed. So 6 grams of pure and 6 grams of battery manganese, manganese dioxide mixed and then 5 grams of aluminum. So let's try it out and see how it goes. This is just a test. First one. Well, since it didn't light the right way, let's do it this way and just see if I can't go, get it going with, there we go. Huh, interesting. It doesn't want to burn continually through. Okay, I gotta refigure this. Nine grams of pure manganese dioxide pre-weighed. Three grams of battery manganese dioxide pre-weighed. Five grams of powdered aluminum pre-weighed. I'm working on a machine that will do this automatically, but in the meantime, I have this uh, plastic measuring tube here with, uh, I think there's five lead balls in there, and I'm going to add these ingredients for the possible rocket engine into it, like so. Okay, you can see it there. There's one lead ball, and uh, basically I'm going to do this to safely shake it up. Five minutes later... There we go. It actually works pretty well. All right, I'm going to separate this stuff and get the powder into uh, the tube that we can test. Even though this is really, really well mixed, I need to break up some of the bigger parts that just uh, happen to occur naturally when it gets compressed, like here. So I'm going to put it between this uh, two halves of a paper here, piece of paper, and kind of break those up. All right, just got to put a hole in the top for the fuse and we'll light it. Manganese dioxide rocket engine test two. This has nine grams. Well, not quite nine, but the ratio was nine grams of pure manganese dioxide, three grams of manganese dioxide from a battery, and five grams of aluminum. I think I'm going to have to use sparklers just as if this were thermite. I'm not sure. Well, there you go. It certainly burned much, much better than the first one. Eighteen grams of pure manganese dioxide pre-weighed. Six grams of battery manganese dioxide pre-weighed. Five grams of powdered aluminum pre-weighed. Same thing as before, just dumping these portions of this tube here with the lead balls in it. This time, instead of using just a paper tube, I've got some PVC, and I plug the end with a JB Weld mixed with kitty litter, which turns out to be a great plug. So I'm going to fill it from this end, and then back it good, and drill a hole through the whole thing, and this will actually become a rocket engine. Okay, I'm going to finish packing this. I'll be back when I'm done. It's done and packed good. I'll probably put a little putty on the top here just to keep the contents inside because I have to still drill it. And I know drilling through rocket fuel seems like a crazy idea, but if you go slow, and I've done this many, many, many times, very slow and purposely, you can get through any rocket fuel without causing any problems. So There you go, 964 of an inch. I'm not going to build a whole rocket just to test the rocket engine. So I've got this three foot bamboo skewer here, and I'm just going to tape this up here, make it like a big bottle rocket, and then we'll go outside and launch it. Outside here, and let's light this manganese dioxide rocket. I'm interested to see if it works. I just thought also it's thermite type, so it might take more heat than a fuse to light this. I don't know what's going to happen.
in addition to possibly increasing the nozzle size, I need to slow down the burn rate. So I'm going to lower the manganese dioxide pure from 18 to 16 grams. I'm going to leave the battery manganese dioxide at six, but I'm also going to drop the aluminum by a gram to four grams because this is really what's speeding it up and this. So we'll see what happens here. I'm going to weigh these out and let's give it another try. 16 grams of pure manganese dioxide pre-weighed. 6 grams of battery manganese dioxide pre-weighed. 4 grams of powdered aluminum pre-weighed. I have my drill mill here, so I'm going to dump these in here. There are 6 lead balls in here already. Alright, hook this up to my drill. I'm using wire to hold down the button because I don't want to stand around and do that. Uh, I tilted it on its side with some support just so this is level as could be. And I'll be back uh, in about a half hour to an hour. Let's open this up and dump it out. That is excellent. It is mixed so well. There we go. The new mix. Let's see how it does in the rocket engine. Same process as before. Okay, I'll finish packing this in and I'll put a top on it and drill the hole next. Before I drill the hole, just to show you, I pack it up to about a quarter to three sixteenths of an inch and I just fill that in with some sort of putty. I capped the end and drilled the hole so it's all set to go. That is a 5 30 seconds inch hole. I usually do 964 um, but considering how catastrophically the last one failed, uh, I wanted to make a bigger nozzle in addition to changing the amounts of a couple of the ingredients as we already talked about. So maybe too many changes at one time. I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. So I'm just going to tape it to that and we'll launch it. I had forgotten I made this for launching rockets just like this. So let's do it. I took this outside, of course, with a stick tape to it and uh, lit the fuse and nothing happened. So I was a little bit concerned that because we're working with a thermite mix of sorts, it might take some high temperatures to ignite the engines. But I think from now on, I'm going to just put a sparkler in there. Might be a first, but it should work. So here we go. See what happens. I am concerned if it burns through the wood stick I'm holding it there with that the sparkler might just fall out. But it's a work in progress. Hmm, that's interesting. I took a piece of fuse and rolled about half of it in uh, super glue and then rolled it around in powdered magnesium and let it dry. Now the magnesium is lit. You can see how much brighter the flame was. Okay, let's try again with the new and improved fuse here with the magnesium on it. What I have here is an Estes igniter. I took the tape off of it and then on one half of it on one of the wires, I put some shrink tubing so that it would be insulated from the other wire because they had to be pushed together and narrow so it could go in this far enough past the uh, nozzle. On the end here, I again dipped it in super glue and some magnesium to give it some extra bite, so to speak. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm just going to tape this up like that and we'll try this. The new igniter is in there with the magnesium on the tip and then of course, this is a simple setup with wiring going to a battery and the switch. Just as a reminder, this rocket engine contains magnesium dioxide, 16 grams, magnesium dioxide from a battery, 6 grams, and aluminum, 4 grams, and it has a 5 32nd inch nozzle. Okay, let's give it a try. It's a little windy, but here we go. 3, 2, 1. Dang, not enough thrust. Hmm, I think I've got to add a little bit more aluminum to it. As it really is a thermite based uh, rocket fuel, it's not surprising that it basically almost burnt through the stick here. Uh, like I said, I think I need to put just a touch of aluminum, go back to maybe the five grams of aluminum or six, I can't remember right now what it was, but I'm gonna build that next and we'll try it again. All right, new weight. So I'm gonna use 16 and a half grams of the manganese dioxide going up a half gram from before. I'm going to leave the battery manganese dioxide at 6 grams 
and increase the aluminum powder from four to five grams. 16 and a half grams of pure manganese dioxide pre-weighed. Six grams of battery manganese dioxide pre-weighed. Five grams of aluminum powder pre-weighed. Yep, mixed really well again. All right, rocket engine is packed. I just need to drill the hole on the bottom and I'll put a cap on it again, tie it to a stick, maybe a shorter one. I'm just trying to reduce the weight. This is also about a half inch shorter than the last one, which will reduce the weight of the PVC. Okay, everything's set up as before with magnesium covered uh, igniter inside. You know what that looks like. Let's give this a try. Three, two, one. Beautiful. It's the right mix. For sure. Oh, that is just very pleasing to see. That was really, really cool. So you can make a rocket engine out of thermite. Some manganese dioxide, some carbon to slow down the burn rate, and the aluminum powder mixed together actually worked here. It looks like just lighting the thing correctly is going to be the difficult part, but I really believe with igniters like we did them here will always work. So here's a list of the things that I included in the mix, including the diameter of the nozzle uh, where the exhaust comes out. Have fun.